You rang. You busy? This is Mr. Creighton. And Mrs. Klein. And we're here with your second podcast of the unit, Chapter 11, Lesson 2, titled The Olmec Civilization. In this podcast, you guys will learn about the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Olmec Civilization. As we're going through, there are some terms and names you guys need to know to be prepared for your uh, podcast quiz. And those terms are Olmec, Alluvial Soil, Elite, Glyph, and Mother Culture. Just a reminder, when you hear this sound, it means you just heard a vocab word and you need to be prepared for your podcast quiz. Yeah, all right, you guys. And as a reminder, we have a big idea for this unit, and it is this time, civilizations across time and space share similar characteristics. And then we have a series of essential questions. The first one is, are we all more the same or different across continents? The next one, how do people adapt to their environment and advance civilization? Next up, what are the characteristics of a civilization? Number four, how do how does geogra- geogra- how does geography influence the history of civilizations? And last but not least, how do the roles of and responsibilities of nobles and commoners differ in ancient societies? All right, you guys, the first section, uh, you can be following along in your history book on pages 373 to 374. It's called an early American civilization. Be thinking of this question as you listen. Why were the Olmec able to develop one of the earliest civilizations in the Americas? Okay, about 3,000 years ago, the Olmec lived in what is now southern Mexico. At first, they settled along rivers near the Gulf Coast. They got much of their food from fishing. Later, the Olmec began to farm. This activity helped them to develop the first major civilization in Mesoamerica. The Olmec realized that the flatlands near rivers were good for growing crops. The alluvial soil, soil deposited by running water that covered these lands was very fertile. In time, farmers began to do very well in this region. As a result, the food supply increased. It also became very steady. With a steady food supply, the Olmec population grew. Also, the steady food supply meant that not everyone had to farm. This is something else, you guys, that should sound familiar to you. Because again, if not everybody is having to farm, we can be involved in a wide variety of other kinds of things. So this allowed some people to focus on other tasks. Some became potters or weavers. Others became priests or teachers. As the Olmec population grew, so too did their farming villages. Some of these villages developed into cities. By 1150 BC, the Olmec had built a large silt had built a large city that is now called San San Lorenzo. The center of the city contained raised mounds or large and large stone monuments. The monuments were used for religious ceremonies. San Lorenzo also had areas used for trade. In addition, the city had had housing areas where Olmec priests and rulers lived. Another huge Olmec city began to grow around 900 BC. This city is now called La Venta. Eventually, it replaced San Lorenzo as the center of the Olmec civilization. Like San Lorenzo, La Venta served as a religious and a trade center. All right, answer this question, you guys, right now. What impact did an increased and more reliable food supply have on the Olmec? Our next section is Olmec culture. You can find this on pages 374 to 376. The question you guys should be thinking about, what kind of culture did the Olmec develop? Most Olmec were farmers and fishers. They lived in villages near rivers. The Olmec grew maize, beans, squash, and peppers. They caught fish and turtle and hunted deer. Most of the Olmec who lived in cities were from the elite, an upper class of priests and nobles who ruled Olmec society. These people lived in large houses made of stone. They wore jewelry and fancy clothes. Some commoners also lived in the cities. Their houses were smaller and made of wood or mud and their clothes were very plain. They mostly were laborers and craft workers. The Olmec played a ball game that was very popular with the people. The game was played in huge ball courts. The Olmec may have invented the game. And we actually have a couple of videos we're going to share with you guys um, because this is a game that's kind of been, there's been a rebirth with this game. So look forward to watching some videos so that we can actually see this game in action in class coming up. Yeah, and if you guys have seen some of the animated movies, I think... um, one of them from Disney has it too. Okay. Uh, El Dorado, I think. Oh, El Dorado. Yeah. Okay, right on. Cool. All right. San Lorenzo and other Olmec cities contain several huge stone heads. Each head has a flat face, thick lips, and staring eyes. The purpose of these heads remains unknown. They may be monuments to Olmec rulers, 
or they could be famous ballgame players. The Olmec made the heads out of basalt, a kind of volcanic rock. The Olmec also made small sculptures out of jade. Other Olmec art included pottery and cave paintings. The Olmec used an early form of glyph writing. Glyphs are pictures that represent words, syllables, or sounds. They use this writing to record events, dates, and to tell stories. The Olmec also developed a very accurate calendar. All right, the Olmec worshipped several gods. The chief god was the jaguar. They probably believed that the jaguar god brought rain. The Olmec also worshipped a fire god and a corn god. As you read and listened to earlier, the Olmec built large mounds in the centers of their cities. Later, the Olmec replaced these mounds with pyramids. The Olmec probably used the pyramids as religious centers. Okay, be thinking, and hopefully you can answer this question, how was Olmec society organized? All right, guys, our final section is the Olmec legacy. You can find this on pages 376 to 377. The question we want you guys to be thinking about, why did Olmec culture have a lasting influence in Mesoamerica? Most Olmec cities served as trade centers. The Olmec mainly traded for fancy items that the elite wanted. These items included valuable stones and iron ore. Ideas also were exchanged at Olmec trade centers. As a result, the Olmec culture spread throughout much of Mesoamerica. Around 500 BC, the Olmec began to leave their cities. The reason for this remains unclear. By 400 BC, the Olmec civilization had largely disappeared. Even so, it had a huge impact on Mesoamerica. Many historians considered the Olmec civilization the mother culture of Mesoamerica. A mother culture is a way of life that strongly influences later cultures. Olmec culture and customs shaped the Mesoamerican cultures that followed. These cultures included the Zapotec, the people of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. I tried, bless you. <laughs> the Aztec, and especially the Maya. The question you guys should be able to answer in your head right now, why is the Olmec civilization considered a mother culture? Okay, one more reminder, you guys, we're going to be having a podcast quiz coming up pretty soon, and you've got some terms that you need to make sure that you are familiar with. Once again, they are Olmec, alluvial soil, elite, glyph, and mother culture. All right, you guys, all the best. Goat. Goat.